This typewriter is 100 years old. It's an Underwood number no. 3, I picked it up last week, and after a good cleaning and a new ribbon, it works. Well, except for one major problem. There's actually a couple problems, but we'll focus on one for today. It's missing two and a half out of four feet. Now that might not sound like a big deal, but without those feet, you can't fully press down some of the keys, and those keys essentially don't work, most notably the spacebar. So to actually use this typewriter, I have to put it up on blocks. Recently, I've been experimenting with TPU, a rubber-like 3D printing filament, so I thought, what if I could 3D print new feet for this typewriter? So here's the one full foot that's left. And then the other back foot, only the hardware is left. Here's the one remaining foot. It's pretty mangled, but there's enough there to model our new 3D printed foot. So inside is this sort of captive bolt. We only have two of these bolts, the other two were missing. So I figured out that these are quarter 20 threads and picked up some new ones that are the same length, about three quarter inch of thread. I can grab some dimensions off my existing foot. So the height of that is about half an inch. This typewriter was made in Canada, and I believe at the time it was made, Canada was still using the Imperial system. So I'm assuming that most of these dimensions are in Imperial, which makes sense because these are quarter 20 screws, which is an Imperial designation. So the diameter of the foot, and then on our new screw, we need to know the shaft diameter. Well, it's a quarter 20 screw, so the shaft diameter is gonna be a quarter of an inch. The screw head diameter, so we wanna make sure that this is completely countersunk under the surface. This one is eroded enough that the metal bolt head would be hitting the table. We wanna make sure that that's buried under the surface. It's about half an inch. The head depth. You'll notice that this foot forms a little cup on the top. That cup fits into this washer that's attached to the typewriter. 0.81 inches. Now on the left side of the typewriter, I don't know how, but both of those washers right there and right there are missing. So we can either 3D print them, I can check if I have the washers, or we can design those two feet differently to take up the space of that washer. We're in Fusion 360, and I'm gonna start by entering all those dimensions as user parameters. So I'll go to modify, change parameters. We have the height of the foot, screw, shaft, diameter, screw head diameter, screw head depth, washer diameter, washer depth, 0.125. So let's start by creating a cylinder, which will represent the very basic form of our foot. Diameter foot, height foot. Then we can create a hole in the bottom for our screw. Create hole, click on the bottom. We want a simple counterboard hole. Counterboard diameter is screw head diameter. Depth is screw head depth. We want our counterboard to be greater than the screw head depth or else as the rubber wears away, like it did on the original, the screw head will very quickly start rubbing on our table. So how much do we want to sink it below the surface? If we do 0.1 inch, that should be a really good amount of countersink. Now we need to create the cutout for the washer. So I'll create another cylinder on top of my existing one, washer diameter, and we'll pull this downwards by minus washer depth. So our existing foot looks like it has a bit of a conical shape, but I'm pretty sure that's just from it deforming over time. A typewriter store here in Toronto makes aftermarket replacement feet and theirs are cylindrical. So I'm pretty sure that these started as cylinders and then just deformed over time. So, I don't really think there's anything else we need to modify with this design. I think we can just go ahead and print a first prototype, see if we need to change anything. Let's do it. I'm gonna be printing this using D3D Sigma TPU on my Prusa i3 Mark IIIs. In a video I put out a couple weeks ago, I talked about getting this TPU dialed in. It wasn't nearly as intimidating as I thought it would be, and I will make my print settings available for download. I'm gonna be printing this using 100% infill because I want maximum rigidity, and for a piece this small, it doesn't really use that much filament. I inputted the filament cost in Prusa Slicer, and it's telling me that each foot will cost 45 cents in filament. I think I can manage that. There is an overhang in the middle for the countersink, but because it's relatively small, I think we can get away with printing this with no support material. I guess we'll find out. Okay, right as I started the print, I realized something I wanted to change. I measured the diameter of the foot where it was deformed at the bottom. 
but I should be basing the diameter on the top of the foot where it's not deformed. So if I measure it there, awesome, it's exactly an inch. And I'm pretty sure that will look better on the typewriter. There are these little circle accents and yep, those are an inch in diameter as well. So that's perfect. And since we saved our diameter as a user parameter, I can go to modify, change parameters, change my diameter foot to one inch and it updates instantly. Perfect. Okay, so our final cost per foot is 33 cents, hour and 14 minutes per foot. That's great. The first foot is printing and I have the door to my enclosure open because if you print TPU in too hot of an environment, the filament won't have enough time to cool between layers and you won't end up with very clean results. Remember when I said I had my TPU settings all figured out? Well, it turns out I didn't. <laughs> I kept getting these super ugly edges and I thought it might be moisture in the filament since TPU can absorb a lot of humidity from the air. So I put the spool in my food dehydrator for about five hours, but I kept getting the same problem. Then I turned down the temperature by about five degrees, turned down the extrusion and I got beautiful results. Look at that, so nice. So this version is for the spots without a washer, and this version is for the spots with the washer. And check it out, the overhang printed successfully. It's not super pretty, but that will all get hidden behind the bolt head. We got three, and here is our fourth. TPU has really strong bed adhesion, and I usually have to use my pliers to peel it off of the plate. You don't wanna print this on a naked, smooth PEI sheet because you can damage the sheet when you remove it. You'd wanna coat it in tape or glue, but you can print it on a naked textured sheet, like this one from Prusa. I'll upload the updated print settings to my website. Again, it was lowering the extrusion temperature from 230 to 225 degrees Celsius and turning down the extrusion. In hindsight, I was definitely getting some over extrusion on this guy. Look at the difference between those two. That is crazy. All right, moment of truth. Does it work without the blocks? Yes. No wobbling either. It's like rock steady. Ah, that's perfect. I have more plans for this typewriter, so make sure to subscribe if you wanna see that. And if you're interested in directly supporting my channel beyond watching the videos and subscribing to my channel, which I greatly appreciate, thank you so much, I also have a Patreon page, which I'll link in the description. There are some cool benefits over there, including a patrons exclusive Instagram page where I post behind the scenes content. But again, thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.